They're all young bulls, eh? Yeah. You look at their face. <clears throat> that one that was chasing the goose, he's a six by seven. Really? Yeah. Well, the one sparring off, the one on the right. Oh, th he's a seven by seven. Th that one, yeah, because he looks good from the, I can't tell on the screen, but he looks pretty decent. See, he's eating right now. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's eight. What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's eight on his right side. So that's a second from the right? See the one that's, there's a small one there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he's, um. He just picked his head up. Um, see the one that's eating? He just picked yep. his head up, go left, the next one. And he's got his head up looking at us. He's he's eight on his right. Really? And he's palming it up there too, eh? A little bit. <clears throat> Fuck, this video's looking good. Yeah, right on. <clears throat> There's gonna be... All right, quick, quick elk hunting tips. For the hell of it, while I'm still, while I'm, I'm here right now thinking about it. Um, what is it now? It's late October. I think it's the 20th, the 21st of October. And unfortunately, a lot of Roosevelt elk draws start now, or around now. And it's when the, the rut is actually tapering off, and it really sucks. And a lot of people email me, or text me, or phone me through a friend or whatever to ask uh, for any kind of anything I can chuck out to help them get an elk. I'm not a Roosevelt elk expert that's for sure but um, I have some quick easy probably probably more common sense tips to pass on I'm going to pass them on just in case you know somebody's stuck because I just keep I always just non-stop I'll get messages this time of year non-stop so and so a friend of mine's got a tag or so has got a tag and they can't find any bulls so this is what you should this is what I do um, first off is unfortunately those big old bulls if you if that's what you're after the biggest one you can find which i like to, to they're going to be uh solo and going off by themselves pretty quick I'm just going to go be a miserable grumpy old dog and, and hang out alone somewhere um there's still bulls that are still running so about three days ago let me back up so this is what i do sorry get ahead of myself <clears throat> this is what i do uh when it's tough when they're not calling they're not really active. It's been hotter than hell this year. It really sucked. So what I do and what works for me with both Rocky Mountain and Roosevelt's is I will go into the woods and get in the spot at least over an hour before seeing light. And I'll sit and I'll let it, things quiet down. And then I will let out an absolute ripper, loud as I can, bugle. And I'll point it directly at where I'm hoping maybe there might be elk. And if there is and they're not normally calling or active during the day at all, it's almost a guarantee that that will knee-jerk a bull to respond once. <laughs> Usually it's just once. Actually, it's always once. Because after that, um, I've tried more and more and they just stay shut up. But they just gave it up. And it works. So, then, when it gets light out, you can, you'll be able to see where that call came from. You figure out which way the wind's going. And you start looking around that general area and you should be able to somewhat accurately guess what they're doing. Obviously, they're feeding around then in the dark, right? Where you think they're going to be feeding to, where they might be bedding down. And then you're going to have to do the old uh, still hunt in there after them. It's one way. Uh, another way. So, I can show you some video here too. So, it doesn't matter the species. Like, typically when I'm guiding up, when I've been guiding up north, um, and it's the, the you, whatever species you're after it's always the best thing you can do is get up high you get up as high as you can bring a spot and scope bring your food bring your rain gear bring a pad to sit on if you want and uh no matter what the weather's doing you have to get up high get up to that glassy knob and sit there and use your binoculars and your spot and scope all day long and it's not easy to do for a lot of people but that is the key to success big time um, what else? Uh, some people might not go up because it's raining, it's too foggy. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> one of the biggest Roosevelt elk I ever found and we harvested was during one of those shit-eaten 
way too foggy, way too rainy days. I don't care, we're going anyway. What do you want to do? Sit and camp all day? We'll sit up there all day. Bring your rain gear, bring a shelter, bring whatever you want, but you go. And what happens on the coast with the fog is it'll seem so completely socked in, but every once in a while, boom, a clear patch, a, a clear patch will comes through and you can see. And then it'll fog in again. And many times that clear patch that comes through is just enough for you to spot what you're after. And then it actually can work in your favor anyway, because once it gets fogged in again, then you can start moving freely because they got eyes on them and uh, figure out your stock. Um, this particular glassing knob right here I found, this is on a Roosevelt elk hunt I helped a friend of mine. And uh, I, spent the, I spent the first two days ripping around on the logging roads, on the quad, side by side like an idiot, not seeing nothing. Just looking, seeing some tracks, there's some tracks, can't see anything, brush is too thick. Driving around aimlessly and you're losing your confidence by the kilometer, right? So it's then that you realize that you have to get up high and sit there and look down. And once I did, I think it took three days, maybe two days, whatever, two or three days, when all of a sudden, now I'm starting to see bulls. I'm seeing bulls. I'm seeing them in the Christmas trees down there. I see one over there. I've seen one up at the head of the valley in this video, the very head of the valley. There's one big bull in a slide with a bunch of cows in there. I can see it's, it's definitely doable. Big hike to get in there, but I'm seeing them now, right? You look down at the Christmas trees, half a mile or a mile below, whatever it was, and you start seeing chunks of buckskin showing up in little openings and then gone again. They're in that thick shit. And then you see a little chunk of antler and then it turned out about two miles down valley it was foggy the fog cleared and i saw a buckskin body too far to see antlers and uh i figured it's probably a big one and sure enough we went i watched where that bull went up the mountain in the cut into the timber and we spent the whole day trying to figure out how to get to that cut which way the wind was going we sat there and uh waited for him to come out later in the day and sure enough a bunch of cows came out a smaller bull and he came out we got him. and I, we would not have seen that bull unless we were up high sitting staying put and glassing non-stop and it was pissing rain and foggy that day when anyways all right so that's what you're gonna have to do uh, another thing I, t I as well i noticed with these roosevelt elk is when you get in those substantial river bottoms with big mature alder big alder groves all the way down that that river i found that they really love to hang out in those so um, if you can it's best to do it by yourself because two people is twice the movement and twice the scent is figure out obviously you got to have the sign right you're going to have to have elk trails going down that river bank and in there you've already predetermined the sign in there but one thing you're going to want to do is possibly to if that's all you have, you might be in an area where it's too flat to get up high, which would really suck, especially right now. But you got to get down river, probably down river, whichever way the wind's going. Get down downwind, slip into those alder patches, get on an elk trail, use a cow call every once in a while, and slip along as slow as you can and looking nonstop all the way to like those big alder patches along the river. That would be absolutely fun and uh, probably should pay off in, in bumping into them, I would imagine. Depends on what, what kind of sign you got and where you are. So there you go. Um, but that is the best thing you can do right now, especially when they're not really calling. They're still gonna be rutting up. I heard through a friend who is friend with a lifelong outfitter that the cows come into estrus around the 20th of October again for the last time, which is now. So, uh, should be good time right now this following week i'm going to go back out looking for them again in two days but that's the that is what you have to do you have to get up as high as you can with the best view find that spot you can't quad or bike to it whatever hike it get up there and don't waste your time hike up high sit there bring food coffee bring it all so you don't want to have one excuse to give up and leave right you never quit people that quit get nothing so Bring your food, bring your rain gear, bring your coffee, bring a chair, bring whatever you need, but just sit there all day long. Even if you, you spot a bull, keep looking. Okay, you got one there. I spotted, I think, one particular time, I spotted uh, one, two, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11 bulls spotted one day until uh, I decided I'd probably seen enough and then picked one of them and, and spent the whole day, next day, putting together the plan. So, there you go. Uh, calling is probably not going to do much for you right now. It might, you might get lucky. You might, everybody bumps into that one bull that won't stop screaming and then uh, it's game on and, and that's, a fairly, that's a fairly easy harvest if you can come across a bull who's fired right up and won't shut up. But what I've found the last couple of weeks is they're not calling. And if I, can, I have managed to get one. I, I got one to answer me in the dark about a half an hour before sunup. I got one to answer me once in the timber three days ago. And after that he shut up and we went looking all over the place for other elk, didn't find any, went back to that spot. Sure enough, there was the herd in that same patch of timber. Some cows were laying down, other elk were standing up, but I didn't get my eyes on him, but we saw probably eight or nine elk. Excuse me, and they were about, they were only about 100 yards away from where he answered in the dark two and a half hours previous. So they were holed up in the, in the creek bottom because it's hot out. And uh, that's where they're staying. That's where they're hanging out. And he's keeping his mouth zipped. But he gave it up once, which if I had a tag, I'm confident I could have went down river, snuck up silently, slowly in that creek bed and whacked him. So there you go. I hope that helps somebody. And if you know somebody that might need a hand, a little encouragement, some words of past experience, and send this video off to them, all right? And it'll save me getting a shit pile of text, possibly. <laughs> there you go. Good luck.